This is David Gardner, our prose editor, Gold Dust. Thank you. These things are just a pile of do you know what I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm in trouble tonight. Okay. <clears throat> I know what I need last. Right. Is that camera running? Okay, here we go. You let it that bit out, of course. <laughs> My name is Danny Sullivan, and I'm an Aryan. No, sorry, I did that bit out. That's wrong. My name is Danny Sullivan, and I'm an Aries. I come from sunny Clonmel in the middle of Ireland, and now I'm living in Big Bad London and working in the environmental industry as a refuse disposal technician. <coughs> I earn good money. It's an early start, but we're usually finished by lunchtime. You would be amazed at what I've brought home from the bins. I have furnished my one-bedroom flat entirely free of charge. Because I'm that kind of guy. Waste not, want not. One man's garbage is another man's treasure. That's my motto and my philosophy. And even where intimate relationships are concerned, just because one man has tossed you in the bin, that doesn't mean another man won't come along and take you home and recycle you. <laughs> so, any of you second time around ladies out there, my standards are only moderate. <laughs> I don't demand perfection in a woman. Female and keen is good enough for me. <laughs> You're just female. Uh, beauty, you see, is in the eye of the beholder, and I'm noted as someone who can discern beauty where it completely escapes everybody else. Uh, my ideal partner would be a young version of Olivia Hussey or Joan Baez or uh, maybe Kate Winslet, but I'll settle for an as-is version of Kathy Staff or Joe Brand. <laughs> uh, they told me I should say a few words about my interests, uh, so here we go. I have always been fascinated by the history and evolution of refuse collection. How many people know, for example, that right into the late 19th century there was no centrally organised rubbish collection and all villages and slums and even great houses had cesspits for the night soil and the ash from the fires as well as the food waste and everything else they wanted rid of. When one cesspit was filled, it was, uh, was full, it was covered over and another one dug nearby. It wasn't until 1885 that the whole of London had a regular waste refuse disposal service, horse-drawn of course, and designated landfill areas. Similarly, the dustbin itself has come a long way. In its earliest manifestation, it was simply a wooden barrel which was used for refuse containment when it no, was no longer fit for the storage of alcoholic liquor. The disadvantage was that the wooden barrels often caught fire when ash was put into them, leading to the development of the iris, the iron dustbin in the late 19th century and then the galvanised uh, modern variation. In fact, the modern wheelie bin is again susceptible to going on fire and melting from hot embers, but fortunately open fires and what goes with them are now relatively rare. As well as waste disposal, I have a deep interest in collecting airline sick bags. <laughs> now, it began when I flew over from Shannon Airport on Ryanair. They have this darling little brown sick bag in the pocket in front of every seat. It has the airline logo and it says, for use in the event of feeling ill in flight. That's very sensitively phrased, isn't it? <laughs> the American Delta Airline have a bag with no logo and it just says, if used, please dispose of in the comfort room garbage. The Americans don't even tell you what it's for, just what to do with it after you've used it. <laughs> and comfort room, isn't that quaintly American? They don't have toilets or lavatories in America, they have comfort rooms. <laughs> I really love it. And my third sick bag is one that somebody saved uh, who travelled on Bulgarian air. Now it's a dull green colour to blend in with the intended contents. And it has the phrase, <laughs> for air sickness, printed on it in three languages. Nothing else, just for air sickness. It's got that Slavic Eastern Bloc directness. 
the whole Eastern mentality summed up on a sick bag. <laughs> I'm hoping to get one soon from the, Aust the Australian airline Qantas. I've already had dreams about what it's going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> now, what else am I supposed to talk about? Ah, yes, personality. Well, if I was to sum up my personality in one word, I think I would say philosophic. Like many people in my profession, I'm a bit of a thinker. I'm not content to sling a single left pink dancing shoe into the skip without asking myself what happened to the other one? And what happened to the lady? Did she have to hop home on her right leg? Uh, was the shoe discarded by some latter-day dandini having failed to locate the owner for a lovesick, lovesick Prince William or Prince Harry? I'm the kind of man who can't look at a half-eaten Big Mac in a greasy carton without wondering why the meal was interrupted, what kind of crisis, whether romantic, <laughs> medical or even criminal might have interfered with the consumption of such a succulent delicacy. And what happened to the fries? See, life bombards us with mysteries like this, but how many of us pause to even consider them? How many of us are willing to open the lid of life's dustbin a tiny crack and look in? Uh, yes, the last thing they told me to talk about is what I expect from any potential relationship. How I see our future together. Well, I've never understood why I haven't found the right person for me. <coughs> I'm easygoing, not demanding in any way. I would want you to share some of my interests, of course, and particularly my inquisitive outlook on life always wanting to shovel aside the shallow surface layer of the here and now and grasp at the essence of next week's detritus before it is time to decompose. <laughs> uh, I, see, I see us in a metaphorical sense climbing hand in hand to the top of the heap and looking out uh, across a vast plateau of unwanted and unappreciated human artefacts uh, from which we will assemble a, a happy and fulfilled life together. We mustn't let our hopes and dreams go to waste, still inside their shrink wrap, with their use-by dates long expired. Life, I believe, in contradiction to most religious teaching, is best enjoyed before death, in the company of a loved one, <laughs> and with minimal environmental impact. Let's try not to waste a minute of it. Let's recycle the good bits and designate the bad bits for permanent landfill disposal. Write to me at the address on the end of this film, quoting the reference number that you'll see on the screen. And please don't be embarrassed about your past. You're talking to someone who knows what it feels like to be dumped. Thank you. <laughs>